genetic structure that we would, would, would like to find things that transcend the stupidity and mediocrity of most everyday existence. But I don't see a, contra a, con a conflict between that and the rest of nature. That's part of nature. There's a problem with it. And the problem is it leads to separation, to separatist <coughs> views, to isolation, to aloneness, to feeling of not being part, whereas our natural inclination is we're, we are a community. Yeah. But that's partly these yeah. old categories, like science versus non-science, mind yeah. versus body. I think these categories are obsolete. I agree. They're just knowledge. Let's find out how the world works. Sometimes when we get satisfied about how the world works to the point that you can get a grant from the NSF, people are willing to call it science. I don't care if they call what I do science. It doesn't matter. As long as we get at the truth, who cares if it's science? And, of course, we got all kinds of strange phenomena. They're worthy of study. Don't you find it interesting that biological systems, in your terms, have a need for meaning? Did that uh, evolve? That seems to me, of course it evolved. It seems to me absolutely fascinating. But there isn't any doubt about it. I mean, there isn't any doubt that people like ourselves with our pathetic 46 chromosomes and uh, 100, uh, 100 billion neurons, that we have evolved this uh, tremendous intellectual capacity for transcending the stupidity and mediocrity of most of the things uh, that uh, fill our ordinary lives. That's what makes life interesting. Right, and so the key here is, what is the nature of the scientific evidence that, that for spirituality? And if I'm just taking spirituality here as something like transcending the ordinary uh, boundaries of space and time. And, and I was struck by a remark earlier on about spoon bending. Of course, spoon bending, the, the scientific evidence is very, very poor. But, and, and from the popular sense, that's all that most people know about, about the realm of research, which is relevant. But in fact, there's a huge body of additional research, much of it published in mainstream journals, which says that there are anomalies out there, mostly perceptual, that suggests that some of the, uh, the concepts uh, that revolve around ideas of spirituality, in fact, do have some scientific evidence. I, I welcome all the facts we can lay our hands on. And I certainly am not, I don't want to say anything to suggest that we shouldn't accumulate all this data. But there is a, a mistake that it seems to me came up a couple of times already in our discussion that we want to avoid. And that's the mistake of assuming either this, these data are fraudulent, either there's some sort of fraud being perpetrated, or they are conclusive proof of the mm -hmm. supernatural. There are all kinds of other possibilities. I think there's a, a larger problem, and that is the nature of God's action in the universe. I think that's a problem. But I don't think it's necessary to bring that problem to the action of a soul within the um, psychological or physical action of a human being. I mean, I think you can understand that as an embodied physical pro process, a part of the brain, an emergent function of the kinds of things that the brain does. Um, what are the eth ethical implications of that if you uh, despiritualize the soul? Well, I, we've actually had to take that up in our, our book. If you make it a cognitive process, you have this problem of how about the cognitively impaired. And what, what we're really saying is that what soul is meant to tell us about is the nature and experiences of personal relatedness. And so it's really an adjective term. It's soulish or soulishness. Charles, uh, uh, Warren's a, a description of soulishness, how does that articulate with your own it's, view of spirituality? It's too abstract. I've got to bring this back to a more concrete thing. Well, I thought if, you're a concrete, concrete. if you're a Christian, <laughs> prayer is a central aspect yes. of Christianity. Yes. Now, from a conventional scientific point of view, if the mind is nothing but the electrochemical processes in the brain, when you pray, you're talking to yourself, and that's the end of it. No. Maybe it makes you feel better, but no. then they'll develop a drug that'll make you feel better someday. That's why I say the real problem goes back to the nature of God's action in the universe. It doesn't have to be um, brought down to the well, nature. We're going to keep this universe. program on the soul, soul. And we're going to leave theology out okay. of it. So we have to take a prediction. A hundred years from now, Okay. What more has happened to the soul, Charlie? We have evidence that one mind can communicate with another with no known channel of that. That is a mechanism for prayer. We John. Have, yeah, a hundred years from now, we'll know enough about the brain so that the anomalous stuff that we're uh, struck with today will no longer seem so mysterious to us. Dean. Actually, I completely agree with that, but it will also redefine what we think of as soul. Or, I would agree with that, but say well, there will still be some mystery in the universe as a whole, and that I don't think scientifically we're able to approach the idea of God's action in the universe. Any more mysteries left, Fred? All of the above. There will still be mystery, 
And we will begin to realize that there is something about us that is not just my self and yourself and his self and our self, but there's a unity to us all of which we are all a reflection. That will become very real for us. The question of non-physical souls may be more complex than commonly assumed. Scientists and theologians, it seems, are still found on both sides of that great divide. But can the scientific method even address the issue? Can science seek the soul? There appear to be two answers. Yes, discoveries of brain function eliminate artificial mysteries, previously the province of the soul. And no, there may be certain kinds of knowledge the scientific method cannot access. Some say that we should combine science and theology, but compromise may not bring us closer to truth. I'm Robert Kuhn.